How's it going, everyone? This is Swag MCAT here to talk about glycolysis this time, and specifically what you need to know for the MCAT. This won't be a full coverage of glycolysis, but rather a summary of what most high yield concepts to know for the MCAT besides just memorizing the basic pathway, which definitely is a must. Google Images has a plethora of beautifully drawn glycolysis pathways, so I recommend using one to draw your own and take note of the topics that we pay special attention to in this video. It's easy to get bogged down in the details in any metabolic pathway, and glycolysis is no exception. I'm not here to tell you to memorize every single detail of the pathway. You'll have plenty of time to do that in medical school. Further, 99.9% .9 of people who tell you that you need to have everything memorized probably couldn't draw phosphoenyl pyruvate for you. So take that advice with a grain of salt. On top of that, according to the AAMC, the makers of the exam, you should be able to do well in the biology portion of the MCAT with only introductory biology. Well, that statement is hugely misleading. I mean, what introductory biology course teaches renal physiology? It's a good reminder that you don't have to be an expert on the specifics to do well in the MCAT. That being said, let's cover what you do need to know on test day. So number one thing we want to know for test day is the net yield of glycolysis. And that's going to be 2 ATP being the most important, 2 NADH, and something you may already know just from the stoichiometry of the reaction, 2 pyruvate molecules. I like to call that the rule of twos. The second high yield piece of content you need to know is the rate limiting enzyme and that is phosphofructokinase. This isn't super high yield to know this specific fact, but phosphofructokinase actually um, has multiple versions, and the version we're going to be interested in is phosphofructokinase 1. That will be our rate-limiting enzyme. And the third fact that is definitely useful to know is that there are three irreversible steps of glycolysis. and they are catalyzed by the enzymes hexokinase. So hexokinase is the major form of that first enzyme in the glycolytic pathway. However, glucokinase can also be found in the liver and the beta cells of the pancreas. And the second one, so we'll say maybe hexokinase glucokinase. And then the second one is phosphofructokinase, which is also our rate limiting enzyme. And then the third, is pyruvate kinase. One easy way to remember all of these is that they are all kinases and they're all adding phosphates uh, thanks to the cofactor of magnesium 2 plus and also the cofactor of course of ATP that's going to be supplying our phosphate in those phosphorylation reactions. Finally just one thing to take note of is most problems with lessons on glycolysis is that they miss the forest for the trees. So here are a couple another facts um, to keep some big picture information when you're learning glycolysis and really getting into the weeds on the little details. Number one thing that people miss is that glycolysis only happens in the cytosol. In fact, that first step with hexokinase glucokinase is entirely dedicated to making sure that glucose stays in cytosol. So when we phosphorylate glucose to glucose 6P, we are in a way trapping the glucose inside of the cell and getting that glucose ready to go down the glycolytic pathway. Another fact that's definitely useful to know um, to keep the big picture of glycolysis is that low blood sugar will cause glyco genolysis, or breaking down of glycogen storage to produce glucose or glycolysis. It's useful to remember that all of this is happening basically to create energy. And to get some of this energy with low blood sugar, we're going to need to break down some of that glycogen. So glycogen lysis, glycogenolysis, 
is breaking down that glycogen to supply glucose for glycolysis. That'll be a good first step to start thinking about when we go through later metabolic pathways. The third fact that you should probably know is that glucose needs to get into the cell somehow. So glucose needs a glucose transporter. Well, it's not a terribly large polar molecule. Well, it is mildly polar, but not terribly so. It still does need a transporter. It can't just dissolve through like CO2 or O2 gas. Therefore, it needs a transporter, and there are several types, specifically GLUT1, GLUT2, GLUT3, and GLUT4. One that we'll go over right now is GLUT4, and this is mobilized by the peptide hormone insulin. Insulin will bind to an extracellular receptor and trigger a cascade of events that results in GLUT4 being mobilized to the cellular membrane of whatever cell we're looking at. And usually when we're looking at glycolysis, we're looking at a skeletal muscle cell or liver, liver cell, at least for the purposes of MCAT. And insulin will increase the amount of GLUT4 receptors on the membrane, letting in more glucose from the blood to be able to run glycolysis. Then finally, a fourth thing that people often miss is that aldolase, one of the enzymes in the pathway, makes two G3P molecules, but only after one product of the reaction it catalyzes, specifically dihydro, dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted to G3P, so glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, in a reversible reaction that heavily favors G3P formation. So aldolase, or more specifically, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate aldolase, will split fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into two molecules, namely G3P and DHAP, or dihydroxyacetone phosphate. However, that DHAP is unfamiliar to a lot of people, and that would be because DHAP almost immediately turns into G3P after that enzyme does its job. So that's one thing to keep in mind, that from that point on, for every glucose molecule, we have two G3P molecules, and every reaction after that has to account for that stoichiometric change. So from two G3P, we get two 1,3-BPG etc., all the way to 2-pyruvate. And those 2-pyruvate will eventually, of course, enter the mitochondria and eventually um, take part in cellular respiration. So that's a smattering of high yield for the MCAT. I encourage you to go through and learn, um, learn the pathway for yourself. And that's it for Swag MCAT today. Let me know what you guys would like to see next.